Be ready. Change can happen in an instant. Check on the BBC Weather app. Live from Washington, this is BBC News. Welcome to our viewers on PBS in America. Donald Trump arrives in New York on the eve of his surrender to face unprecedented criminal charges. The former president is spending the night here at Trump Tower, where he's meeting his lawyers to prepare for his court appearance. And New York City gears up for potential protests as Trump supporters gather around the courthouse in Manhattan. <laughs> Hello, I'm Sumi Somaskanda. Welcome to the show. Donald Trump is spending the night in New York, where he is set to make history once again, this time as the first president of the United States to be charged with a criminal offense. Tonight, Mr. Trump is meeting with his advisors in Trump Tower, no doubt, discussing the charges he is set to face, connected to hush money paid to porn star Stormy Daniels in the lead up to his campaign for the presidency in 2016. Now, the exact charges he faces will be disclosed in full in court tomorrow. Mr. Trump denies any wrongdoing, calling it a witch hunt. And in the city, police are on high alert, with barricades erected around Trump Tower and the Manhattan Criminal Court, where Mr. Trump will appear tomorrow. Now, BBC News is covering this story from all angles tonight. Joining me live to discuss all of this now, Sarah Krisoff, a former assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York. Doug Jones, a former Democrat senator for the state of Alabama, and Pete King, former Republican congressman for the state of New York. But first, we want to talk to our correspondent, Michelle Fleury, who is standing by for us in New York, where all the action is happening right now. So, Michelle, you are at Trump Tower. What's happening there? We will, of course, bring you full live coverage from New York of Mr. Trump's appearance in court here on BBC News. And in the meantime, if you want to catch up on just what the legal terms like indictment and grand jury mean, or if you want to read up on the background to Mr. Trump and Stormy Daniels, then just head to our website, bbc.com news, or you can download the BBC app. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. So some of the most interesting stories that I told the audience is, well, I can look back to the very beginning of my career, a junior reporter during 9-11. That was a huge story and it was so difficult to tell, particularly because I had to interview people who had lost uh, colleagues and loved ones in those towers in New York. Moving on, the economic crisis of 2008, that was a huge story both in the UK and globally. And I talked to so many people whose lives have been turned upside down by the then banking crisis and the subsequent economic out. I was the chief presenter during the COVID pandemic and I was coming into work uh, trying to convey the story to viewers who were stuck at home during lockdown, not only in the UK but across the world. More recently I was sent to Windsor to cover the funeral of Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, and I was there getting a real sense of loss and sadness. You know, it was a great honour for me to be sent there by the BBC uh, to cover a story like that. You're live with BBC News. Thanks for watching our show. And we have some breaking news coming into us now. The Australian government has now announced that it will remove TikTok on all 
federal government owned devices due to security issues. Now, this is significant because Australia is now following a host of other Western countries who have taken similar moves. Remember, the UK has made a similar decision, as has uh, the US here, Washington, this government as well. But uh, this is now Australia saying that it will no longer allow TikTok on government devices there. And we'll continue to follow the details of that story as soon as we get any updates on it. Uh, but that is our breaking news coming into us uh, at this hour. Now, the Russian government is blaming Ukraine and opposition activists for a bomb attack in a cafe in St. Petersburg on Sunday. Dozens were injured in that attack, and Vladin Tatarsky, a well-known pro-war blogger, was killed. Russian authorities have detained uh, this woman, Daria Trepova, and released a videotaped confession from her, most likely recorded under duress. Let's look at what we know from our security correspondent, Frank Gardner. And a warning, this does contain some distressing images. And do stay with us here on BBC. We are watching this developing story. We'll show you those pictures again. Donald Trump is here tonight in Trump Tower in New York, preparing for his arraignment on Tuesday afternoon. Those are live pictures from New York. We'll have another live report and more analysis at the top of the next hour. Thanks for watching BBC. I'm Sumi Somaskanda in Washington. from Washington, this is BBC News. Donald Trump arrives in New York on the eve of his surrender to face criminal charges. He's spending the night here at Trump Tower, where he's meeting his lawyers to prepare for his court appearance on Tuesday. And New York City prepares for a potential protest as Trump supporters gather around the courthouse in Manhattan. Hello, I'm Sumi Somaskanda. Welcome to our show. Donald Trump is spending the night in New York, where he is set to make history once again, this time as the first president of the United States to be charged with a criminal offense. Tonight, Mr. Trump is meeting with his advisors, no doubt discussing the charges that he is set to face, connected to hush money paid to porn actor Stormy Daniels in the lead up to his campaign for the presidency in 2016. The exact charges he faces will be disclosed in full in court tomorrow. Donald Trump denies any wrongdoing, calling it a witch hunt. Now, he is uh, spending the night, as we said, at Trump Tower. We'll show you uh, now some pictures of Trump Tower tonight in New York. You might be able to see uh, that there are barricades set up there uh, around Trump Tower. We mentioned, of course, that New York police are on high alert in preparation for Donald Trump's appearance at the Manhattan Criminal Court. Uh, of course, uh, Trump Tower as well, beefed up security there uh, as New York prepares for what is going to be an historic event tomorrow. So that's the picture right now in New York at Trump Tower, as we mentioned, the former president there speaking with his advisors. All right, Doug Jones, Will Hurd, and Sarah Krisoff, thanks to all three of you for sharing your perspective with me tonight. Now, we will, of course, bring you full live coverage from New York of Mr. Trump's appearance in court right here on BBC News. And in the meantime, if you want to catch up on just what the legal terms like indictment and grand jury mean, or if you want to read up on the background to Mr. Trump and Stormy Daniels, then just go to our website, bbc.com news, or you can download the BBC app. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. It is a fantastic, fantastic job. It is journalism in real time. These stories are, are happening in front of you and you're trying to 
interview the key players, you're navigating through live pictures, you're in a sense guiding the audience through, trying to make sense of what you're seeing. And we're living in an extraordinary time for news in terms of the magnitude of stories. But it's not just the heavy lifting, there's science, there's technology, there's trends, there's culture, there's sport. And what you're trying to do constantly is to blend all of that, the interesting stuff, the stuff that people are talking about, the fun stuff, you're, you're trying to blend that into your shows. And I love news. I'm a real a news junkie. And when I think back as a, as a kid at school, you know, I was the one that was watching the budget programme live on my own, obviously, but now you get to be actually doing it. I mean, I love this job. It is, it is perfect for me. You're live with BBC News. To Russia now. The American journalist who was arrested there last week over accusations of spying is appealing his pre-trial detention. Uh, this here is Evan Gershevich, a correspondent with The Wall Street Journal based in Moscow. He was arrested on Friday on charges of espionage and has been accused of spying on Russia's defense industry. He's being held in detention until his trial on May 29th. The Wall Street Journal has strongly denied the allegations. And in this tweet on Sunday, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken revealed that he had spoken to Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov to convey Washington's grave concern over the arrest. Russia says the case will be decided by the courts, but there are possible diplomatic responses like prisoner swaps. BBC Russia's Olga Ivshina explains. And just before we go, let's return to New York for some of those live pictures of Trump Tower you're looking at there. This is where Donald Trump is spending the night. He's been uh, meeting with his advisors, no doubt discussing the charges that he is set to face ahead of his appearance at the Manhattan Criminal Court on Tuesday. That's where he will be arraigned on those charges linked to a hush money payment made to a porn star ahead of the 2016 election. New York City police have erected barricades around Trump Tower, also around that courthouse. House. They're on high alert ahead of that appearance. So we'll continue watching these pictures for you and be back at the top of the hour. I'm Sumi Somaskanda in Washington. Thank you for watching BBC. Washington, this is BBC News. Welcome to our viewers on PBS in America. Donald Trump arrives in New York on the eve of his surrender to face criminal charges. He's spending the night here at Trump Tower, where he is meeting his lawyers to prepare for his court appearance on Tuesday. And New York City prepares for potential protests as Trump supporters gather around the courthouse in Manhattan. <laughs> Hello, I'm Sumi Somaskanda. Welcome to the show. Donald Trump is spending the night in New York, where he is set to make history once again, this time as the first president of the United States to be charged with a criminal offense. Tonight, Mr. Trump is meeting with his advisors, no doubt discussing the charges that he is set to face connected to hush money paid to porn actor Stormy Daniels in the lead up to his campaign for the presidency in 2016. The exact charges he faces will be disclosed in full in court tomorrow. Donald Trump denies any wrongdoing, calling it a witch hunt. The former president's journey from Florida to New York was followed across the globe. Here's the BBC's Neda Tofik and Barbara Platt Usher on the President's Day. Sarah Krisoff, thank you very much for joining us on the BBC tonight. Thank you. 
We will, of course, bring you full live coverage from New York of Mr. Trump's appearance in court here on BBC News. And in the meantime, if you want to catch up on just what the legal terms like indictment and grand jury mean, or if you want to read up on the background to Mr. Trump and Stormy Daniels, then just go to our website, bbc.com slash news, or download the BBC app. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. This is an era driven by data-first modernization, made for those who push beyond the usual barriers towards a new future. HPE GreenLake brings the cloud to you, securely connecting data wherever it lives, edge to cloud, putting you in control of fast-forwarding your multi-generational IT. This is intelligence unlocked, opportunities opened, hybrid cloud your way. HPE GreenLake. Do I look like a <laughs> raver? I've got bass in a backpack. This is amazing. Dancing for like four or five hours of a gig, you could generate about 800 kilowatt hours of thermal energy. Right, so shall we give it a taste? And it's my favorite. We're really talking to the plants, and they're telling us how happy they are. It can fly, but it can also float on water. Oh my god, that came by quick. It's all about augmented reality. Beautiful, right? Beautiful. Totally and utterly immersed in another world there. Your tech update. Click on BBC News. You're live with BBC News. The Russian government is blaming Ukraine and opposition activists for a bomb attack in a cafe in St. Petersburg on Sunday. Dozens were injured in that attack, and Vladin Tatarsky, a well-known pro-war blogger, was killed. Russian authorities have detained uh, this woman, Daria Trepova, and released a videotaped confession from her, most likely recorded under duress. Let's look at what we know from our security correspondent, Frank Gardner, and a warning this contains some distressing images. Before we go, let's show you some pictures of Trump Tower, where we know uh, the former president, uh, Donald Trump, is spending the night. You see those pictures there right outside of Trump Tower, also some barricades erected as well. Now, we are waiting to see that big arraignment on Tuesday, so we'll be following that right here on BBC News and also on our website. I'm Sumi Somaskanda in Washington. Stay with us. Hello. There's some real contrast in the weather across Europe, west to east at the moment.